Hello, everyone. Today, I thought um, I would paint this fun little tree frog. I remember, I just happened to remember today that uh, years ago in college, decades ago, one of the classes I took, this woman, uh, I don't remember what we had to paint. She, one of my college teachers would always give us kind of a choice. I think we were working wet and wet. And I remember this woman that I just thought, oh my gosh, what am I doing in this class? I am so far out of my range. Um, was painting this beautiful little tree frog and all in wet and wet. So that just happened to come back to me today. I went looking through a lot of my reference photos and I found this fun little tree frog. So I thought I'm going to revisit that and see how I might do with that these days. I'm going to be using my, my Lang um, paint set because I'm getting a little bit low in some of my Windsor Newton paints and they're a little bit pricier. So I thought for these um, fun little tutorials, I'm going to go ahead and use my My Ling. Uh, one of the colors I'm going to be using is, um, let's see, I think it's, this is going to be their yellow green. I think we'll use that. So let's just do a little swatch of that. Yeah, I, I really like that color. Um, as you see me do a lot, I like to kind of pull it out and get the different values. And today I'm also using my Degato brush. And then let's see, I think I will also use their hookers green. Let's see what that looks like. Ooh, my goodness, maybe not. That's a little bright. Um... Let's see here. Let's see what this green is. Okay. Yeah, I kind of like that. I want to say that is their, give me one second to look it up on their paper. I believe that is their hookers green. So I kind of like that. That's a bright, really pretty color. I take that back. I think that is going to be their emerald green. Yeah, that's their emerald green. Yep, so I think I will use that as well. Um, let's see. I'm looking at this little reference photo I found and I will try to post that. It has some of this fun blue color in it. This These tree frogs are really, really bright and colorful, which I love. So I think we'll use some of that. Um, let's maybe play with a little bit of the cad yellow in a few spots. We're really going to play and have some fun with this. Um, there's also a pretty vibrant orange in their feet. So we'll use a cad orange for that. And maybe just a very tiny touch of this vermilion. I think that might be fun just to do some little accent darker areas around the cad orange. So there we go. Of course, I'll have some, um, maybe a really, really deep, let's see, what color is that? Yeah, maybe a Prussian blue for this little frog's eyeballs. Okay, so I think this will kind of be my color palette here that I'll be using. And these, again, are all the My Ling, um colors I'm using instead of my Windsor Newton today just to be a little bit more cost effective for me. I need to order more Windsor Newton. So I today am using this paper. It's Stonehenge because my daughters gifted me that and um, 
This is what they call a block. So it's sealed on all four corners, which is really nice because when you're working wet and wet, you typically should um, you either tape your paper down or use a block because you will get some warping when you're using wet and wet. So let's just wet our paints a little bit. And that activates them because they're hard in the palette and then you just spray them and it um, softens them up and gets them ready to use. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is I really wanna play with this, this little tree frog's head. So I'm going to grab, actually I'm gonna grab my Princeton, my go-to brush. Might be a little bit big. I'm gonna go ahead and use it though. And I'm just going to wet his little nose and his little face, um, which is this really beautiful bright green. Let me grab my towel. And let's just go ahead and wet. Now remember when we do wet and wet, we want to make sure there's no puddles. It's just shiny. So I'm gonna go around his nostril here and kind of down in here. So I'm just wetting this entire area with my brush. Again, making sure that I'm not getting any puddles. I'm just getting a nice sheen. And this paper is a really good paper. It's again called Stonehenge. Um, it's your 140 pound cold press. I'll link it for you, but I don't know if I would always buy it. It's a little bit more expensive unless I was doing a piece I was gonna sell or something. Okay, so I've got that pretty well wet. Now I'm gonna go into one of these colors. I'm gonna start with the lightest color, that really pretty uh, tree green, I think, or they call it, yeah, tree green. No, I'm, yeah, tree green getting used to the myling colors here. I'm just gonna put it in my palette. Look at that, which is really funny because I normally would never use this color. It's almost iridescent, but I think it's really fun in here. So I've got some paint on my brush. It's not dripping as you see. Let me scoot this over a bit. I go in there and I kind of tap it on the edge to get rid of any drips if you're not sure. Just tap it on your paper towel, and I'm going to start kind of dropping it in here and just kind of letting it do its thing, which is, you know, I love wet and wet for this very reason. Now, it's really hot here today. <laughs> it's in the 90s. So my paper's drying rather quickly, as you can see. So it's not quite keeping that wet and wet as it might normally when it's cold. So I'm going in and just wetting a little bit of these areas because I want to work wet and wet. Now I'm going to go into this other green I have here. Ooh, which one was it? Let's see. Okay, yeah. And I'm looking at my reference photo and around his little eyes, which is right here, he's just got some cute little froggy spots. And look how beautiful, you guys. You know, I know I say this all the time, but honestly, I just, I love watercolor. It's so fun. I just love it. Now I'm gonna actually go in with a little deeper green. So there's, let's see, what color do they call it? I guess it would be this olive green in their palette here. And I'm just gonna barely, I don't wanna use too much cause I'm really trying to go for these bright colors, but I'm just gonna dot in. And look how fun when you're using this wet on wet this is. Just to, kind of give it some fun little dark colors, just like that. Now, 
I'm also going to, because this isn't staying real wet, again, because it's so hot and dry here. So I'm gonna help it out a little bit. And to be honest with this little frog, it's okay if you get some, um, you know, blooms and some things like that. I think that could be really, really fun. Okay, let's go down his back, which, so I'm gonna get it wet. Again, no puddles. Isn't this green so fun? I love it. Which is funny because I would never normally use this green. But I think it's really fun for these little tree frogs. And then I'm gonna go back into that real iridescent type of green. And just start dotting in again. and letting it kind of spread, okay? See, look at this now, isn't that pretty? I might even go in there with a little bit more of that olivey green. I don't want too much because I'm actually kind of enjoying um, this bright green. I think it's really fun. And probably the only time I would ever use that green so i'm gonna kind of enjoy it here but i do want to use this just for some highlights i'm sorry some uh, low lights like shadowy colors so let's just play with that add some interest and this is that olivey green i think they call it yeah olive green There we go. So that's kind of fun. I wanted to leave his back a little bit lighter. Okay. Yeah, I kind of like that. So let's go into his tummy here, which actually in the photo, it's somewhat, not somewhat, it's pretty white, but you know what? I always encourage you to do your own thing and I want my frog to be pretty much this beautiful green color everywhere. Kind of like that. So I'm also going to do his belly in that green because I'm kind of having fun with it. So again, going wet into wet and I'm working a little fast here because my paper is drying so quick that um, you know, I I want to get it before it dries. Hold on one second. And I will share with you my reference photo, okay? Um, I just lost it here. It just disappeared. So let me get it. I kind of um, did some fun little photos. So I think what I might do in here is let's go in with that darker actually i'm going to use that darker green where did it go here do, do, do. here it is it's almost like an emeraldy green which i really like and let's just darken look at that how fun is that there we go there we go and then rinsing my brush and going in just with a damp brush and kind of pushing that around. Look how pretty that is. Oh my gosh, I love this little froggy. I have people who, when I was doing commissions, were always asking me to do these fun little frogs. And then let's go into his leg. I'm kind of excited to do his leg because in the pictures I was picking up, the little legs were green, but with red toes. Like, how fun is that? It's almost like this little guy was made to be painted in this whimsical fashion. 
just for our enjoyment. Could you imagine coming up on one of these? How fun would that be? So using my green again, and to be honest, you don't, you know, don't do puddles here, but you can kind of allow it to be pretty wet. And don't just color in the whole space, a solid color. Let's, um, you know, put some darker spots here, which is just tapping in like that. Tapping in here and there, something like that. I'm going to darken this lower ledge, uh, not ledge, this is his little belly, with my olive green just to maybe show a little bit of shadowing like that. Maybe a little bit up here. I'm really winging this, you guys. I didn't practice this before because that's kind of how I roll. And then, there we go. Look how beautiful this little guy is. He's so cute. Watercolors are the perfect medium to paint him. Just gonna paint around that edge there. And there we go. There we go. Maybe up here on his little eye. I'm using a light value. I think I'll go around the top of his eye with that darker olive green. Kind of like this. There we go. Yeah, that's kind of fun. And I'm gonna make the inside of his eyes eventually like a reddish. So we'll let that dry, but let's paint his other leg. So I'm gonna get his other little leg here wet, no puddles. So just using a wet brush, but not dripping. And if you think your brush might have too much water on it, you can just tap it. And then let me go into that beautiful iridescent my laying, it's the tree green and we'll lay down some color in there, something like that. There we go. I think that's really fun. What a cute little guy. And this is really, look at how beautiful. One of the reasons I just, again, I love watercolor. Now I'm gonna go in here, and get this wet. Got a little bit of green in my water, so it's tinting it a little bit green, which is fine. Let's go in here. I'm just very loosely going in. Okay, I don't wanna color in every single spot perfectly. And then I really liked that kind of emeraldy green. I think I might add some more little touches. And I'm really just kind of dipping in and letting the watercolor kind of do its thing and go where it wants. Because I think that's really pretty. I'm gonna go in here. Let's do this one, because this one's dry a little. And let's give him those orangey red, cute little toes. Okay. So I think for that, I will use the Scarlet Red. So I'll just dip into that. And that's to me is their kind of, I think actually that might be um, a, their Scarlet Red and their Cad Red. Look how fun, and then just tapping in. Isn't that fun? These guys are so cute. I should have looked up where they're kind of native to. Really like to know that. And then because I don't like these hard edges, I'm just gonna kind of soften that a little. 
and maybe blend in a little bit of my cad orange. So wetting my brush, not too wet, like a tea consistency, and then tapping it off to get some of the extra and going in and just, you know, the fun thing about uh, painting wildlife and flowers that I just love is, you know, they're very organic. They're not perfection. So, you know, you can kind of let them, I'm gonna put a little bit more red in there. You know, you don't have to be perfect and I love that. That's why I love nature. It's why I love little critters because they're not perfect and that's perfectly fine. So look at that, how fun. And that's what color I'm gonna do is little eye too. I saw these tree frogs with gold eyes, but I think I really wanna do those red eyes. It kind of pops. Then let's go over to the other little froggy here. Making sure I don't have puddles. Rinse my brush, wash it and go into that beautiful myling tree green tap off any excess and let's go in there and you know don't be so particular about covering every square inch of every space i'm going to go in there and tap in with that um that emerald green because I think that's such a pretty color. And yeah, look at that, how fun. Actually didn't put too much of that in that side. Now that has a little bit too much water, so I'm just drying off my brush and picking some up like that. There we go. As you can see, I'm being really free and open with my painting here. I'm not being perfect. I'm just playing, enjoying these colors. I might add a little bit of shadow there. I've got a little gnat flying around here. How funny is that? It's almost like it's flying around my little frog. How about if we do some blue in there? Let me find that blue that I shared with you. They call it light sky blue. And let's see what that looks like. Maybe in here, just do a little glaze. Maybe here. That's kind of pretty. And then just with a damp brush, I'm gonna go and just soften this line here. Kind of let it blend upwards. Yeah, I like that. And then that I'm going to leave just how it is because I think it's kind of pretty. So look at all these beautiful colors. While we um, let this dry a little bit, let's go in and do our little froggy toes in the cad red and the cad orange. And by the way, if you all like, I will up try to upload this to... Um, my Etsy and I don't know, charge five bucks or something and you can download it and download the image of my finished painting and the brush strokes I used and all that. I've been doing that for you and you guys have really seemed to like those, but they've been um, ones you have to order and have shipped to you. So. I'm really working on digital downloads for you guys. So that way they're only five bucks. If you're in Canada or somewhere, you don't have to worry. Um, you don't have to worry about um, the shipping costs. Cause I heard a lot of you saying, oh my gosh, I really want to buy your, your art kits, but ooh, that was a little bit too much. So I dried my brush off and just picked it back up. No worries. Go in with a little bit more of that cad orange. Like that. Look how fun that is. 
I'm really letting all of this blend as it wants to. Yeah, I quite like that. Let's color in this, that little area there. And I almost feel like I wanna add some of this blue down in here too. Let's do that first. So there's that sky blue. I think that's what Mylene called light sky blue. And I'm going to go in and just do a line. Now, uh, this has dried, so I do that. And then, as you know, I don't like hard lines, so I wash my brush and I just softened that line. And look at that, it looks like there's a shadow there. So I quite like that. I think that's really pretty. There we go. Yeah, I think that's really pretty. Okay, so let's see, what should we do next? I'm really dying to do this little eyeball. So let's do the red around it first. So I will dampen my brush, go around it, no puddles. and just wet this area so you can see it shine. Just using the tip of my brush and I'm holding pretty close to the ferrule so that I get some control. So let me do that. Okay, now here goes the red. There we go. Okay. I like that. Isn't that fun? I actually want it to be a little bit redder. So what I'll do is let that dry, then go back in with another glaze of that. And meanwhile, I'm going to make this red. So I'll go into my CAD red here. And let's just see the difference if I don't add water first. So this was wet and wet. This is gonna be wet and dry. And watch how much more vib vibrant it is. Okay. Had to stop there because I had an Instacart order and this person was really stuck on ringing my doorbell till I answered it, which they don't normally do. So I was saying, this is wet and dry. So look at how much more precise that is. Let's go over this now, see if this is dry, which it isn't. And let's color that one in. And see, that one is much more uh, washy. Let me grab some of my red paint. I really want to get vibrant with this. So there's the two, the perfect example of wet on wet, but now I went back in there and this was wet on dry so I could get exactly where I wanted to go, where this kind of washed a little, it spread a little, which is fine. We'll go back over it once it dries. Just like that. This little guy that I drew, his eyes we're not perfect. Now that might take a while to dry. And then we're gonna go in and just create the middle is gonna be a black. Okay, so let's paint this little area with his little dots. So I'm just wetting the area with a light coat of water, just making it shiny. like that. 
And you know, the thing with watercolors too, is you will really notice how the weather can affect it. Like if I'm painting outside, that's a whole nother challenge. So I'm just gonna dot in here, kind of some areas like that. Um, when I am painting outside, I used to paint over at the park a lot. And if there was any wind or even a nice little breeze, it drives your paints immediately. So you gotta be kind of careful of that. I'm gonna go around here and I notice their little eyes are a little bit darker, like almost a brownish color. I'm gonna use a dark blue, like a Payne's Gray which is almost a black, but not. So hold on, let me find my Payne's Gray here. There's my Payne's Gray. So Payne's, this is the Mylene Payne's Gray anyway. Um, let's see. Interesting, their Payne's Gray, Mylene's Payne's Gray has an awful lot of blue in it, as you can see there. So that's okay. We're, we're gonna use that. And then just tapping off your brush to get that excess. And I'm gonna go in and just do a little line here. You know what I think I'll actually do is mix that with a little bit of the green. Cause I don't want it to be too stark. And I'm just gonna kind of go around his little eye here like that. Yeah, and maybe right here. There we go. Yeah, I kind of like that. And I'm just barely using the tip of my brush. Okay, I see here we forgot his other little foot. So let's go ahead and get that wet. Just so it's shiny like so there we go now i have a little bit too much water so i'm just going to tap it off you definitely don't want those puddles let's do his other little foot here and go into our cad red and tap in tap in So as you can see, the paint, when you use watercolors, the paint only goes where you put the water. So it's stopping right here because that's as far as my water goes, which is kind of cool. You can kind of let it do its thing and know that it will basically stop unless this green was also red. So there we go. Just coloring. How fun is he and colorful? Okay, now again, this kind of dried. It's so funny because I'm getting, it just started getting hot here. So I'm really noticing it in my paints like such a difference from the last several months. I have to kind of remember that, that, oh, that's right, it's gonna dry faster. There we go. So I just mix some of that red and that orange, cad red, cad orange. And I think I could even almost darken up these, but we'll leave those for right now. I'm gonna go in here and create these fun little dots Let's see, what color should we do those? Mm, I think I'll do those that deep green, this olivey green. So I'm going in and getting some of that paint and just going to 
kind of put a glaze on there, just like that. I think that's pretty. I'm gonna pick up a little more olive green, little darker value, just meaning there's more pigment than paint than water. And tap it off and kind of go in there so we get some different darks and lights, which always makes it interesting and why I love, love, love watercolors. There we go, so that's kind of fun. And boy, this is still not dry. I'm gonna go in and color his other little eyeball over here, black, and let's cross our fingers that that red is dry now. I know in a lot of um, watercolor videos, you know, if I knew how to edit, I could stop this and um, edit that, but I don't. So let's just create this. And I wanna have a white spot in there. So I am really using the tip of my brush and going in and drawing that in. And as you can see, I left some little white areas in there just for like the shine in his eye. I really wanna go in and paint this, but I'm afraid that red is not quite as dry as I would like it to be. So, whoop, slopping my water, guys. All right, so I think what I'll do on here, this is all pretty dry. I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna wet all the, oops. Now, see my water's getting kind of dirty, so I'm gonna use my rinse water. I'm gonna kind of go in and put a little bit of water all around the hair. And then what I'm gonna do is Go in and get some more of that pretty tree green, maybe mixed with a little of that emerald green, and I wanna make it really watery, okay? And then let's just go in, and if you need to cover some areas, and just kind of tap in here and let it spread because I think that's kind of cool in a frog. You could even just tap something like that. I think that's kind of fun. Then I'm gonna do the same here. I'm just going to wet all this. And then go in and kind of tap in some of these little froggy spots. So you can cover this if you want. I'm just getting really, really close. And I think what I might even do is let's tap in some of this pretty blue. So here's this light blue. I think that'll be really pretty. Ooh, yeah, look at that. This is one colorful frog, you guys. Look how beautiful. I'm telling you guys, watercolors, especially when you use wet and wet, it does it all for you almost. There you go, look how fun that is. Okay, I feel like this back leg needs a little bit of something. So let's just re-wet that just with a very light wash of water. and go in and we'll just do the same thing. Just tap in with some of the green. Just create a little bit of interest here. There we go. Good enough. Now, if you want some of that olive green, you can touch in with that too. You know, these little froggies they are very colorful, so I'm gonna go in here, just kinda 
create more of a line there, just like that. So I think we're about done. I need to color in his other eye, but as you can see, that's wet. And if I go in right now, darn it, um, it's going to spread into that red. I'm really taking a chance here. Woo, see, it did right there. So I think I'll just give you an idea of what that's going to look like. And as it dries, I'll go back in and redo that. So there you go. Now you could, you know, go in here and add in a little bit of olive green just as a shadow. Something like that. Let me get a little bit more of that olive green. Where'd my olive green go? There we go. And just go in and because this is wet still, it's going to blend really nicely. See how I got that beautiful blend in the bottom there? Yeah, I like that a lot. Just go one more time. Ooh, I got a lot now. There you go. Yeah, I like that. Now, as I'm looking at his little mouth, most of their little mouse in my reference drawing are kind of white, but I feel like I almost want to add some brown or something. Let's, how about let's do this. Let's take a little bit of a deep green right above his lip. And add that just to kind of create a more of a line. So I'm holding my brush straight up and down so I can get that point. That's how you get the point. And I just went along and did the top. So I think we're good, you guys. I think this is really, really beautiful. I'm gonna go in bit here and do the same thing underneath his lip just like that there we go so it kind of defines his lip a little bit and again you can go in and you can add um, some more little spots I'm just softening that a little bit because I don't like to see that hard line so I just took a damp brush and just went along there. So you could keep going in and doing some more of these blue, green, little dots, little splatters, because I think that's pretty interesting on a frog. Maybe here, be careful, you know, cover your work, which I'm not doing here, but because you don't want it to go maybe into some of the other areas. So something like that. So there you go, you guys. I hope that was fun for you. You could always play more with this. Um, you know, you could do some wash underneath him. Like get creative, do, do what's fun for you. And I think I'm done with mine though. And have fun. I will list all of my colors down below. Um, and by maybe I should show you what I'm talking about for the background. So let me do that really quick. Um, you could either take your, your um, paintbrush and wet it. Or an easier way is to, uh, let's see, let's do some of our green. And you can splatter into the background like this. And then watch this. So you could do some of that and then just spray and let it kind of do its thing. It creates its own background, really. 
So that's an easy way to add some interest in your background, something like that. And you could go all the way around and do that. So I'm just taking some paint. I'm just splattering it. And then taking my little spray, spraying and letting it kind of move around and you can help it a little bit. And that's kind of fun. It adds this fun background like that. And then we might as well do this corner. So let's get, ooh, that's a little too bright green. Let me get some more of that tree green. There we go. And splatter here. And then take our spray bottle and spray it. There you go. So very easy ways to get a fun little background. You could kind of push it around like this. Make sure you don't touch, especially that black eyeball. Something like that. Look how fun. Okay, so there you go. I'm gonna stop right there before I do something I regret. But have fun with this, guys, and thank you so much, as always, for being here. I'm so grateful to you guys, and um, happy painting, and happy 4th of July if you're celebrating. All right, everybody, bye-bye.